Hoping to see it. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see what characters that we have going into this match. Okay, it's... Uh, yeah, it looks like Smok's going to be leading off with his Wolf, Wolf. and Jen, of course, leading with his uh, Palutena. Palutena sort of leading the pack on his host of characters for the time being. He also has uh, Fox on the burner. I know he's been looking to try other characters as well, but Palutena's been what's really letting him stamp his way to being one of the top players in New York. Yeah. And, of course, on the other side, Wolf is no stranger to the high end of bracket. Everybody seems to have a Wolf nowadays, and Wolf has just been putting in a result after result. And Maybe on the top of the hit list for potential nerfs coming into 3.0. Who knows? But right now we're playing today in the here and now. No nerfs required, and they're playing it in. It looks like, um, you know, it's Palutena jumping out a little bit to the early lead, uh, but not too far. Nothing that Wolf isn't able to make up pretty quickly. Absolutely. One of the things that's most notable about Wolf is the fact that he has insane damage output. I want to highlight how Jen has been able to hop in and out of Smox range as far as what he has to worry about going in for trades, because trades are going to be so much more important for Smock than they are for Jen. Every little hit is going to matter so much more when Wolf is packing a punch. For sure, and they're going right back in, and it looks like Wolf in a little bit of disadvantage state. Didn't throw out the down tilt, maybe uh, wasn't ready to try to two-frame that Wolf recovery. It's going to be interesting to see on the edge guarding side, you know, Wolf is really known as a character that's able to play that ledge trap game, but also two-frame a lot of characters below the ledge. But Palutena's teleport recoveries, you know, if you've seen the BB Smash 2 video, is able to uh, navigate around a lot of those two-frame situations if they're really technically precise. Uh, but on the flip side of it, Palutena is also able to two-frame characters, and Wolf is suspect at edge guard, or when in that uh, recovery situation, for sure. And as far as Wolf is concerned, coming to the ledge, like all the spaces, he has a fairly linear recovery. Yeah. So as long as Jen is able to position himself right, he'll be able to extend that ledge play, rack up more damage, net potential kills, and as far as my opinion goes, I feel like Wolf has the weakest recovery of these spaces. Uh -huh. His upbeat doesn't bring him as far. Wolf Flash at a very strange angle, uh, even more linear than Sun has. It's not really, you're not able to really maneuver it. Quick dash attack's gonna allow Jen to punish out that forward smash. Sitting at 145, kind of bleeding things out, but the way that Jen has been putting on the pressure and then making sure not to overextend, really good play on this part. Yeah, he's off, but he's off stage in a little bit of trouble. And Smoke picks up that big stock in. He's brought himself right back into the game. Only 20% uh, separating our two competitors. Not a whole lot, just one low percent combo. If one of them gets the wheels turning, then they're gonna probably be looking at a lead. It's immediately tied. And yeah, it's, it's a little dangerous to see the wolf going for the up air. Big damage. And what was once a, you know, Jen uh, lead is now a deficit. But he's battling right back. I like how Smok is trying to keep this battle towards the platforms. We saw how well he was able to juggle Jen when he was in control of the stage. He's trying to evade a lot of Jen's pressure by just going back and forth. And it's, it's, it's very small circle camping, but it's something that I feel Wolf needs to do because he's, he doesn't really have the best of approach options. Like, yeah, his dash attack's going to open up a lot at early to mid percentages, and fastball in there is fantastic. But aside from that, if Jen's able to read those options or check them with dash attack or back air, then Smok's going to let be left vulnerable. And he really can't afford to do that while he has the momentum. Yeah, and especially with it being so close, one slip up could be the difference in the match. We're racking up high percents on the second stock. And, you know, that getting into that last stock first is so pivotal, especially with this game being so much about momentum. A big dash attack and Palutena fiending for that up air. Jen didn't get it, but he does get the back throw on Wolfson. A little bit of trouble off stage. Gets the down tilt. There's that ledge trap we we're talking about. Doesn't pick up the nair. Yeah, down tilt is huge. Yeah. Despite the fact that it can regularly two frame, it just has a large hitbox. So yeah. it's not too surprising to see it pick up from the ledge. It's sort of an awkward space. And it definitely sets them up in a really precarious situation. It's like where you don't want to be versus Palutena for sure. Big forward tilt. Uh, wasn't able to get the clean ledge snap on the teleport. And it's actually Smock opening up a lead and getting some forward air. Um, it, uh, yeah, Jen air dodging out of that combination, minimizing the damage and doing his best to try to seal the stock before it's uh, too much damage on the table put up by uh, Smock. And it's a big pickup, and we're even going in. This is a good match to start out day two with. So far, things are looking pretty evenly handed. And I like how Jen is showing a lot of the similar uh, restraint that Smock was earlier, but not wow, really what a pickup. that space. Look at that. <laughs> it's in the blink of an eye, Forward Ooh, Smash comes out, and Wolf is too powerful. <laughs> like. That's what I was telling you, man. He hits hard. Yeah, he just. There's sometimes you got to respect that, and especially watch the slow mo. Boom! Empty landing from Jen. Not the greatest of calls. Left him vulnerable, but he should be able to bounce back from this. Even 
if there's no stage change, you bring things back to Pokemon Stadium too. I feel is actually a pretty strong start for for Gen. At the very least, it's going to be a bit more of a neutral stage. Uh -huh. I feel like both of the characters can control it well. They can contest for it evenly. Yeah. Um, they edge guard both each other fairly well. But one thing I want to see more from Gen is just sort of baiting out more. I noticed that Smock was not using Wolf Blaster a lot. Right? Yeah. That gun was not drawn, except for like maybe twice. Yeah. And it's usually a good tool to stop zoning, but if you force the wolf to feel like they need to zone, force you to approach, yeah. then you're in a really good position, especially as Palatana has a lot of good uh, zoning tools of her own through Explosive Flame and Auto Radical. Yeah, as you said, uh, right back to Pokemon Stadium 2, they're opening it up. As we mentioned, game one going to, uh, going to Wolf, going to Smock. Jen on the deficit, you know, it's a winner's bracket, so of course these competitors have another shot at it if they lose, but nobody wants to take a trip to loser's bracket right now. So many killers lurking in the waters. The Sharks are already uh, already ready to go. And you bring up a really good point, folks. Like, I was saying this earlier, a lot of very impressive players made it through the top 64 on the loser's side. So losing out at this early of the winner's side bracket could be a death sentence for some of these players. And these are good players, yeah. too. Can't count them out just yet, but if they end up losing here, there's a good chance that it's going to curb their run for the rest of the tournament. And we'll be able to make it out of that uh, recovery situation. You know, it's uh, hoping Jen's able to start converting some of those down tilts. Uh, those are the big plays that Palatina Really needs an exercise versus Wolf, just because as we were mentioning, a lot of that neutral situations, it's uh, it's kind of Wolf's field day. But if Palutena is really to exercise her advantage situation, that's the recipe for success that Jen's really looking for overall. Gets that oh wow big uh, projectile off stage. There it is, down tilt back air, like you know, training room back home, no problem cleaning out that stock. Yeah, man. Sometimes you got to keep it, you know, cooked by the book. <laughs> it's not the the most complex of edge guards. Sometimes you don't need to get super fancy. Even though Palutena's kit allows you to be very fancy, a lot of what makes her a strong character in Ultimate right now in the early meta is the fact that with such a simplistic kit of using her aerials and just really jabbing down tilt, you get so much off the character based off of how well you could follow DI, you could respond to players' patterns, and look at how well that Jen holds the ledge without really committing to too hard of options. Back air has a vulnerability on it, so it's safe to check anything that Smok tries to run at him. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, those bread and butters that you can feed a family off it. Oh my god, a back air. Yeah, and this is kind of the reverse of the first game. It was so close coming through. Jen was like, I'm tired of losing. Let's play. Let's run the play where we win. Let us run the play where we win. Coming through, and let's see if um, Smock's able to make some sort of comeback, but he's kind of been knocked on his heels uh, here in game two. All right. A little bit of the back air pressure, even on the shield, still going to manage to poke on through. And it's. It's looking like a better game for Jen overall, but I still feel like if Smock plays in a way that lets him like force the approach out of Jen, you can still make this look like game one very quickly. Yeah, he's just like a few uh, Wolf, you know, Wolf classic plays away. You know, maybe a big forward smash read or two from being right back into the thick of it. But that is the luxury he has of winning game one and making that big play in that last stock of the last game. He's, he has a little bit of, you know, it's that comfort even if you're losing a game. It's like, yeah, I'm still winning the set, technically speaking, I can take a breath and let the game kind of come to me instead of having to really force the issue. But speaking of forcing the issue, Jen is still forcing his will all over Spock, just commanding the presence of the game, so much damage, and just looking so in control this entire game. Yeah, I actually like this more aggressive approach from Jen because it allows him to just nab all of this momentum that Smock had garnered up to this point. And even though Garner, uh, Smock hasn't really changed up how he's approaching the matchup, still doing a good job of spacing his fares, trying to challenge with those heavy hitting moves like back air and up air. Wow. But Jen is just willing to throw it out and just like that, going into game three. That was a good up smash. He's just waiting patiently. That's kind of a mix because we've been seeing him be so aggressive, so aggressive. And then he's gonna flip the scenario. He's gonna feel that, you know, Smock's gonna want to come in. And then boom, the up smash hits. Thank you, Instant Replay, for uh, showing us what was up. That was a solid play overall from Jen. And if he carries that momentum coming into Game Three, it looks like he's gonna keep on swimming through winners bracket. And Smock might be heading to losers bracket, but it's the rubber match. Anything can happen. Right. Let's see where we're going. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up, actually, uh, since this is going into Game Three, this is still a best of three. We're not yeah. gonna be seeing our best of fives until Top 32 later on today. So. This is where this match is really start to beat the pressure onto the players. They're not going to have those extra matches to sort of learn their opponents, get themselves centered. Like, it's do or die. Yeah. And yeah, definitely uh, do or die, at least uh, do, or, uh, do or losers bracket for sure. Yes. And 
they're hovering over stages. Looks like Smashville's the uh, the play. So welcome to the Church of Smashville. Let's see what characters they're going. Probably going to run back the same matchup, I'd assume. Uh, no character surprises. Is hovering over Incineroar? Okay, well, there we go. Oh, Incineroar would be wild. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, we're mixing it up here in game three, but staying with the tried and true. Um, got some awesome player cam action right there. The crowd's starting to filter in. It's an uh, early morning start that the Smashers aren't used to, but we're getting right into the thick of it. Game three, Smoke and, or Smoke and Jen. And I love how immediately Jen goes right for center stage. He's not wasting any time. He wants to cement that this is his stage. I might have picked it, but it's his time to win this set. Yeah, just trying to pick up right where he left off in game two, but Smock coming out swinging. You know, that's one of those things. If you uh, get knocked on your heels in game two, you want to come out with a commanding exclamation point statement in the beginning of game three. Momentum's so big, uh, and that's kind of the way to ice the opponent's momentum if they won that second game. And so far, a big lead built up right now, but Palutena is starting to get the wheels turning. Jen has Wolf off stage, big time, big damage. Uh, doesn't pick up that back air. Good spot dodge on the down smash, surprise. That would have hit me. That's a very interesting option. One thing I'm just now noticing out of Smog, he seems to be a bit hesitant with how he wants to edge drive. Take note of like, how deep into Smash Roll he is when he starts going for down smashes and forward sets. Now, with Wolf, he can afford to go deep. He can afford to get aggressive, because if he gets that one trade, like we were talking about earlier, that's going to be big for him. He can either cause a situation where Jen is forced to tech him to the stage, or might just bless him off into the last zone. He's got to be able to get bold, regardless of the pressure being. And, oh, wow, evens are right back up, <laughs> I was going to say. Quality play coming out from uh, Jen to take that stock, but Smock with the immediate rebuttal and going right back to work. Now we're just in a slugfest. Who wants it more? Going back and forth, putting in big damage. Here we go. Palutena combos. And a little bit harder down. after the nerves, <laughs> but Jen has always been really good with mixing up when he goes into pressure with his forward airs. Yeah. And then Smock has to be really careful at those later percentages. He starts to DI inwards, try to get the mix up. Jen's going to be able to read that, go in for the up air, and all of a sudden Smock can find himself in really bad situations. Just percentage points separating her two commanders. Big down smash! And Smock is here to take game three. That's the second stop. One more, and he's on his, as well on his way in winner's bracket. This is uh, trouble time for Jen. He's got to pick up, and he's making it happen. And let's see. Well, goes for the down tilt. He gets it. Big back here. And of course, we're dead even on the last stocks of game three. Elton's Aurora Bear is so, ex like, it's so executionally demanding when you're at the ledge that close. You have such little time to input that dash. It's so clean to see it consistently coming out from a player like Jen. But pressure's on now. He's got to make this Nair chain last. He's going to drop it a little bit early, but if he can keep center stage like this, I feel like Jen's going to be able to clutch it out. Yeah, unfortunate jab. Looks like he got stuck in the rapid jab part and let Smock get out of that guard break situation. And he's going right back to it. Smock starting to pull away just a little bit. And we saw with the big damage coming out of the smash attacks from Wolf, that lead that he has could turn pivotal and turn into a, you know, the game win in the blink of an eye. You just throw out one C-stick down and it could be over for all we know. But Jen doing his best. Smock puts out the claws, it's a wrap, but <laughs> I like how Jen is trying to keep the battle to the air. He knows yeah. not to, to even attempt to challenge any of those low profiling moves, but he's not even gonna get the chance. An air dodge with the back air. And Smock's gonna take a two one over Jen. And that was that was the the payoff and the fruition of so much pressure in the air. You saw him throwing out up airs and getting forward airs, you know, all the wolf classics. And of course Jen is feeling the pressure. Puts in the air dodge, you know, you get a little trigger happy with your finger after you've been hit so many times, just want to get out of that situation. And he knew, threw out the back air, closed out that game. Yeah, man. I mean, Very it's good like, win. 